afternoon. This is Hilda Ward, and I am going to be reading some poetry. Uh, one of the poems that I love, and they seem to pour out of me, is my I Am From poems. Um, so I'm going to read one right now. I am from ancestors who struggled to survive, and family that worked hard, and an extended family who reached out to take care of each other. I'm from hopscotch and kick the can to spin the bottle and secret loves. I'm from cheerleading and straight A's to scholarship to help go to nursing school. I'm from girl, that street will be there and eat those mashed potatoes. I'm from where is Korea to sending friends off to that war. I'm from raising three children to moving into a home of our own. I'm from working, raising girls, and going to college to become a teacher and found it felt like home. I'm from retirement to go to Africa to dealing with life and death. I'm from living on Thomas Jefferson's grounds to a second retirement. I'm from love and contentment as an elder walking this earth. I'm from nursing and teaching to being a writer of words. And so I'm here feeling gratitude, the woman I have become and feel blessed to be here on this earth. That felt really good. And when I was reading it, I found myself thinking about when I was a, a kid doing hopscotch and playing kick the can <laughs> and uh, some of the lessons that I had to learn. And I happened to find this just when I was getting myself ready to come. And so I think I will share this. I wrote this in 2003 and it's about when I was in nursing. And uh, I was writing this poem at, to go to a, a reunion. And it's called Glimpses and Memories, More Than 50 Years. And I'll just kind of put the picture up so maybe you can see it. Someone did this for me, and it really is pretty beautiful. Uh, oh, my daughter, what am I saying, someone? My daughter did this. She made this for me. OK, El her name is Luann. Glimpses and Memories more than 50 years. It's been 50 years, 50 years since we got our stripes and how proud we were in long sleeves. Where have we gone since then and what have we done? What did we give the world and what role did we play? What title did we gain and whose life did we touch? Oh, the stories we can tell since we wore blue with attitude shoes, learning anatomy, meds and making beds, going on nights and running a floor wondering when Miss Connelly will come and find something wrong, working surgery and afraid we will contaminate the field, while tensing when Dr. Russell or Policia appeared and flinching when they made that first cut, going to Father Toomey's class and told to light up, <laughs> playing basketball with Sister Louise Anthony when she laid in two points, going on affiliation to Middletown and fearing losing the keys, McCook with the iron lung and Sister Kenny Pax, working the diet kitchen not knowing how to cook, while serving Sister Eileen lobsters on Friday when we had mushy fish instead, wondering what was shepherd's pie and how many meals we had to serve. Who threw specimens down the chute and who broke the thermometer tray? Who snuck in late at night and dated the interns? Who got caught propping babies and who delivered one? Who slept in chapel and who got caught smoking in the lounge? Who remembers a teacher's name and the head nurse on Maine too? Who remembers a resident who gave them a hard time? Who prayed before a test and feared forgetting the parts of the heart? Remember sweating in the croup room and, and making a crisis bed? Remember those big oxygen tanks and Dr. Verdi's rounds? Remember early morning care and getting setting up for last rites? Remember giving evening care and making surgical beds? Remember how many bedpans you emptied in those split shifts? How many temps did you take and what about complete baths? How many enemas did you give and how many babies did you feed? As we sit here, let's remember those who we have lost and those we can't seem to find. No, we don't walk as quickly as we did, but we're here to remember. So let's share the stories and keep the memories going. Take pride in those years and how far we've come because we are truly blessed to be here today. 
to laugh and cry and tease about what we were then. So let us celebrate 50 years to look to meet again, and may we never forget. Yeah, this brings up lots and lots of memories when I was in nursing school. Uh, lots and lots of memories. And being in nursing school, it was a very a real privilege for me, and I really felt really good about being able to, to be a nurse. And let's see what I can share with you in my book of poetry here. Uh, hmm. Almost giving up. This one is, was a hard one for me to write, and yet I feel absolutely grateful for it. Almost giving up from darkness to light. I almost gave up when I stood in the kitchen, losing the soul of my intestines, erupting and exploding on the floor. I almost gave up when I saw I had no control of my body. I always controlled like an exotic dancer. I almost gave up when I thought I had lost control of my life and the world seemed free of me. I almost gave up when I cried my tears of anguish, weeping for a comforting word. I almost gave up when I pulled in my fears and anguish to protect my youngest offspring, but she wouldn't let me give up because she heard my despair and sent me a lifeline of blossoms. I won't give up because I have a spring of life around me I want to share with those who surround me. I will not give up because there is a lesson I must complete and lessons I must share. I don't give up because they keep me standing tall with life and love to hold up this temple. Thank you, past, present, and future for allowing me to stand up to the world to be seen with joy and ecstasy. Thank you, my ancestors, for allowing me to stand up to dance with the flow of eternity and say, what a joy to be me, what a joy to be alive. Yes, that was a tough time for me, and yet when I look back, I feel very blessed that I am still here and that I can read this poem and know that I am still standing tall. Yep. This one, uh, I can't remember when I wrote it, but it, it, it's a reminder for me all the time. Sit quietly and take it in. When you sit quietly and allow yourself to hear your heart, then your soul can come forth to comfort you. When you sit quietly and listen to the wind and feel the flowers, then your soul takes on the contentment it begs for. When you sit quietly and view the vastness of the mountains, then your soul can feel the presence of the divine creator. When you sit quietly and view the tiny creatures of the earth, then your soul can feel deep into the soil of life. When you sit quietly and feel the flow of the wings above, then your soul can step out and fly with a joy. When you sit quietly and feel the mist of the waves, then your soul can be washed clean with a pureness. When you sit quietly and watch a deer slide gracefully in your path, then your soul can feel the gentle love of your higher power. When you sit quietly and feel the earth under your feet, then your soul can plant itself solid in your temple. And you can write and write and write to seek the contentment of your soul. And you can write and write and write to find the answers that rumble inside to come out. And you can write and write and write to know the joy of exploring what surrounds you. And you can write and write and write to feel yourself on a healing path that brings you to write and write and write to know you are right with the world and so it is yeah that that always seems to give me comfort and here's another one a raindrop a raindrop falls touching many things it touches a rose petal to glisten it touches the grass to sparkle it tickles a little girl's nose on the way to school. It becomes a puddle for a little boy to splash. It hits the window at night to soothe restless sleep. It becomes a part of the raindrops, making a rainbow appear. It touches us all, but it is remembered. But is it remembered when it disappears? I often wonder about that. Raindrops are wonderful, and yet we don't always appreciate them. Ah, a snag. 
I always loved reading this one. A snag doesn't have to be bad. Just grab the threads and intertwine them back into your fabric. If it can't be repaired, just snip it off and keep on moving. It will be all right, whatever you decide. Don't try to pull on that thread trying to hold on. You might find the entire garment of your soul unraveling. I have no idea what I was thinking when I wrote that, but it is a, it's quite a message, yeah. Oneness, wholeness, a moment, a tear, a blade of grass, a drop of rain, each beautiful in its oneness, and yet special in the bland, blend of wholeness, a human, beautiful in its oneness, yet special in the blend of wholeness. Yes. That feels good. Ah, music. Music brings me joy to dance across the floor, to allow me to hum a favorite tune, and allows me to feel those mellow tones that comfort me as I listen. Music brings me ecstasy as I wallow in those tunes that excite me and makes me dance, a dance of sensuality and love to express much contentment in life. Music brings me comfort as a warm quilt that covers me to feel safe and secure, as the notes bring me laughter to soothe my soul and keep me content. Music brings me feeling of wonder as I listen to all the instruments that connect and gives us a plate of many phrases that express much feeling of contentment. Yeah, that's a recent one. And here's another recent one. When the sun sets, when the sun sets, I feel contentment that allows me to feel blessed with another day, that I walked this earth and shared life with others. When the sun sets, I feel a bit sad because another day is ending, and I wonder what life might have brought to my heart that allows me to feel joy. When the sun sets, I feel warmed by the glow of the red sky that makes me know I am alive and breathed in another day. When the sun sets, I feel often alone as I sit gazing out at the mountains and wondering how their day might have dawned to bring forth new life and many colors. And so I gaze out as the sun sets and thank my higher power for all it brings to me, wondering where the next day will come. I'm sorry, wondering where the next day will take me when I arise to greet another day, hoping I will greet another sunset that will make me take in all the day brought. While I say what a blessing this day was, and I want to say a prayer of thanksgiving. Yes, I feel blessed every single day when I wake up and every sunset because another day has passed, and I hope that I've done it justice. <laughs> Yeah, that, that one is a recent one, because now where I live, I can look out at the mountains, and it, it really is a comfort for me. Yeah, let's see what else I can share with you. I love being able to share my poetry, and it's fun to be able to do this. And let's see what we can come up with here. Ah, joy is expressed. Yes, joy is expressed in my heart when I see a smiling little one whom I want to reach out and touch and feel the warmth radiating from their smile. Joy is expressed in my laughter as I react to a funny story that tickles my soul and makes me want to dance with deep expression. Joy is expressed in my feet when I hear the drums from the motherland and my body moves with expression of deep connection with my ancestors. Joy is expressed in my hands when I pick up the pen to write, and I feel ecstasy as the, word pour, as the words pour out, with no holding back and with much expression. Joy is expressed in my soul when I hear a sermon, and I reach out to express my thoughts as he teaches us about the word. Joy is expressed in my eyes as I gaze at the deep evening sky and the gathering wings upon my patio and my heart wants to step out and soar. And so I'm grateful for the joy that comes to me in many ways, and I feel blessed to express it with all those I care about. And so it is. Yes, 
I do feel much joy, and it, it's a blessing that I still can express this joy. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Ah, Melody. We grasp each other like two small children, groping and holding on to, butter, to a butterfly in flight. We search for each other, and we seem to hear each other's moods. We talk so freely as our bodies move, and the words come so quickly our ears can't hear it all. We flow together like a beautiful melody, in harmony and perfect tune. The music is heavenly and magical, and each note blends with our world. We are alone, and life is perfect as we fall limp into each other's arms to dream of where we were and what may be. That was written many, many years ago. Yes, yes. Ah, wonderful. Let's see. Ah, well, we just finished with Martin's Luther King's uh, birthday, so I'm going to read this. Martin, Martin, you inspired. Martin, you led us to stand up straight. You made us know that we can't be turned around. You made us see we must work hard. You led us to make others know we matter. You taught us to fight, not striking a blow. You coerced us to look at life. You made us feel the strength of our blackness. You led us to vote. You inspired us to have a dream. You felt concern for us all, all who are oppressed. You died for us and you brought us all together. I thank you for walking, talking, praying, and most of all, inspiring. Yes, Martin, you still do inspire us. Uh, I feel you quite a bit. Well, here's another one that I wrote, Melodious Blessings. This was written June 2001. May each day bring sunshine that will warm your soul, to breathe in the love and caring, filling your every being. May each hour be filled with fragrances of healing and blessed energy to fill you deep inside like a comfortable family quilt. May each moment bring deep rapture of excitement and contentment to bring inner joy to your aching body with compassionate touch. May each second arouse your vision of blossoms and songs of birds to allow you to connect with the universal love that is standing still for you to take in. So, take in a deep breath and allow all the beauty to surround you with love, bringing healing to your soul and joy to your heart. And so it is. Wow, yeah, that felt good, that felt good. And let's see if I can come up with it. Oh, I don't know why these pictures are here, but they're pictures of me when I was a little girl. I guess I'm just going to show them to you. <laughs> Let's see if I can show you which one is me. Okay, this is, this is me. This, I don't remember where this was taken, but I guess it was at a studio. <laughs> and I was, I guess I was a couple of years old. And then this is another one probably at the same studio. And this is, this is me and my brother. Yeah, <laughs> I just happened to find them in here, and so I'm going to put them in my, put them in my TV. Yes. Okay, and here's another one about Martin Luther King. King Community. I wrote this uh, August 4th, 1991. King Community. People from all parts of the world, people from our neighbor, from our neighbors, Canada and the Caribbean, Young people, older people, white, black, Hispanic, all gathered together in nonviolence, looking for ways to express it, working to change things. How wonderful, how special. Young people questioning and not understanding nonviolence. Older people reaching out to solve problems in their own communities. Religious people seeking, I'm sorry, religious people searching, trying to understand their religion. People connecting, trying to reaffirm their beliefs. What can we do? How can we do it? Should we do it? Where is their help? It lies in us. It falls on us. We must do it. Help is in ourselves and in the Lord, 
and so it is. Well, uh, this was at a Martin Luther King conference in Atlanta. I remember going and learning nonviolence, which was kind of hard for a lot of us. Ah, and here's another one. I think I've read this one before, but I think I'm going to read it again. Katrina, Ancestral Call. Louis Armstrong, your trumpet must be blowing for the anguish of your people. Sarah Vaughan, please moan for those who don't seem to utter a sound. Duke Ellington, let your hands run across the keys to tinkle the sound of tears from those lost in salvation. Lady Day, cry out in soft tones as you did when you sang bitter fruit. There was bitter fruit in New Orleans as folks begged for food and hung in lines for hours. Count Basie, play those chords and hum along to soothe the anguish of motherless children. Saints of New Orleans, march down those muddy streets playing your instruments to cleanse the toxicity of racism and neglect. Play hard and loud in your funeral march to comfort those bodies who lay on the street for days. All musicians who have gone from the French quarters to a better place beyond, spread a blanket of comfort for those who still remain, like fat Domino who had to be carried out to safety. Martin and Malcolm, lead us out to find a better life and remind us when we be become complacent. Medgar Evers and Fannie Lou Hamer, give us the word to stand before the delegates and say, we must be heard. W.B. Du Bois and Frederick Douglass, remind us to stand up and orate and record our history so this will not be forgotten. Sojourner and Phyllis Wheatley, lead us to freedom and help us create the poems that say, we can't be turned around. Help us to bring forth those who will stand tall. We need warriors to come forth and say, we will not allow our bodies to be stacked up again like our ancestors were in ships. We need children and young people to walk forward and say, we want the best education and we need nurturing so we can grow to be strong adults to fight the system bravely. We need allies, black and white, native and Latino, Asian and East Indian, gay and straight, rich and poor to stand together and say, we see the racism and we will not allow it to happen anymore. We see it and our eyes can't be closed any longer. We see the poor and disenfranchised and we will not allow that anymore. We will pull together so that all people will be free. All men and women will have quality of life and will not be ignored and treated with disrespect. We need to stand together and march forth to show the strength of our convictions and shout, no more, no more. You will not do this to us, no more. This time it's out there and you can't sweep it under the rug of power and greed. It won't stay under there anymore. This must never happen again. No more, no more. Yeah, that was a heavy one to read and yet it really felt good to let it out. And how much time do I have left? Ah, I'm going to read, No One Can Wear a Hat Like a Black Woman. And as you can see behind me is a quilt that was made for me just so that I could read this poem. No one can wear a hat like a black woman. No one can wear a hat like a black woman as she pre prepares for church, finding her gloves and straightening her stockings, greasing the children's elbows and knees. The last thing she must do is place that hat on her head, tipped a bit to the side. As she pushes the children out the door, she takes that last look in the mirror. She may have made breakfast, started dinner, and pressed a few heads, but when she walks out that door, she has a walk that shows pride, with her gloves in her hand and her bag tucked under her arm. She walks tall as a beautiful queen. No one can wear a hat like a black woman. She may have been on her knees scrubbing floors and cooking in a white woman's kitchen. She may have scrubbed clothes on a washboard and set loaves of bread for the week. And she may have made a few sweet potato pies for church. But when she dons that Sunday hat, she walks with an elegance that is regal and her head is held high with that wide brim. So no one can wear a hat like a black woman because it covers hard work and a life of struggle, but it adds a sense of pride that can't be removed. Today, 
She may not be greasing children's elbows and knees because they're grown and on their own. She may not have to press heads and fix dinner because she now lives alone. She may not be on her knees scrubbing floors because she's now a supervising scrub nurse. She may not be cooking in someone's kitchen because today she owns her own restaurant. <laughs> she does not scrub clothes anymore and set any bread because she now sets policies and laws. She may not make pies for church anymore because she's now the pastor. But she still wears that hat with pride. And no matter what she does in her life today, no one can wear a hat like a black woman. So think about her when she enters church. Look around and admire that woman in the hat. And know that's a special woman who needs recognition because she makes changes in the world each and every day. I always love reading that poem. It just makes me feel so proud to think about my, my ancestors and my mother and my grandmother and my aunt and uncles. And it's just a wonderful poem that just poured out of me and I feel so proud that I was given the gift to express that. Yes, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but no one could wear a hat like a black woman. Yes. It's been wonderful being with you all again, and I, I hope you enjoy my poems. Uh, I'm just going to read this, and it, it'll just go. This is one of my CDs that I wrote, Oh How I pray, Praise Thee. It's spoken word created by Hilda Ward, music by George Melvin. Writing is my life, and so I must share it with the world. Dear Lord, thanks for blessing me. I have no idea where you are taking me on this path but I am yours and I stand ready, knowing you have made a way for me. I will continue to speak your praises. You have allowed me to grow and find peace. You pulled me three, through to find me. You blessed me with life and healed me to walk this path. I know I must do your work, and so I dedicate this body of work to you and all those who have been there for me. And so it is. Yes. Thank you so much for watching me, and I really feel so blessed that I can share my poetry with you again. It's been wonderful. Uh, poetry really does share me, and I love the fact that I can share it with you. Thank you. Blessings. <laughs>